We're staging a crash to find out whether school-run parents' faith in the safety of their 4x4s is justified. We've got a typical second-hand discovery, and we're going to crash it head-on at 40 miles an hour into an alternative family car choice, a used Renault Espace. And to make sure we test the cars to the limit, there'll be just a 40% overlap when they hit. That's a harder test because it concentrates the load of the impact on a smaller part of the car's structure. Now, recent designs like the Espace have cross members at the front to channel some of the load to the rest of the bodywork, and our collision will be a good test of their effectiveness. But making the outside of the car tough is only part of the story. Once you've created a survival space, it's then down to the restraints within the car, things like the airbags and seat belts, to help cushion the blow. It's also vital that things like the dashboard don't have any sharp edges or bits sticking out. You don't want a face full of aggressive cup holder. To tell us what it's like on board during the crash, we're using some fearless volunteers. This is a hybrid three dummy and costs, wait for it, a hundred thousand pounds. The money goes on all the shockproof precision instruments inside him. The head's made of aluminium and covered in rubber flesh. And inside it are accelerometers that record the forces the brain would be subjected to in three directions. And there are more measuring devices in the neck to detect the tension, shearing and bending forces as the head's thrown forwards and backwards in the impact. In fact, there's an array of measuring devices throughout the body, all collecting data that can be translated into an assessment of likely injuries. We'll have £400,000 worth of hybrid dummies in our two cars. The drivers, and to represent that most precious of all cargoes, crash test dummy children one in each car. Instruments in the child dummies will measure loads on vital areas, like the child's head and chest. As we said earlier, there's no precedent for a crash like this, and expert opinion is divided as to what will happen. Which of the following scenarios do you think is most likely? Perhaps the 4x4's extra weight will see its steamroller through the Espace. Or perhaps the Espace's more modern design will shrug off the attack of the 4x4. Or might the taller Discovery roll over on impact? The Myra winch is ready to pull the cars together. So where do you think your family would be safest? Now's the time to find out. Both cars seem to have suffered horrendous damage, but if you look more closely at the structures, differences begin to emerge. Here on the Espace, this beam here is connected to a crash member. As you can see on the passenger side, it's still relatively intact. But if we move over onto the driver's side, we see it's crushed, absorbing the energy of the impact. And not only has it absorbed the energy, it's also sent it through the A-pillar and along the sills, which has deflected it away from the passenger compartment, which has stayed relatively intact. So it looks as though the driver has had room to survive. But if you look at the Discovery, it's behaved very differently. The chassis on the Discovery is actually stiffer than the Espace. Here's the main chassis member here. But all that hasn't actually helped the occupants inside the car. All it's done is deflect the Espace into the softer bits of the Discovery's bodywork, with the result that the driver has much less room, and it looks as though his chances of survival would be uh, pretty grim, really. Many older 4x4s share this stiff chassis design and might dissipate the crash forces in a similar way. So what could our crash test dummies tell us about the experience on board? Well, the readings from the Espas dummy suggested that the driver would probably have been able to walk away from the wreck, shaken but not seriously harmed.
The loadings on the dummy in the 4x4 were more severe. But a last-minute technical fault prevented the airbags firing during the test, making direct comparisons difficult. From the physical intrusion alone, however, there's little doubt that the 4x4 driver would have suffered much more in this collision than the driver of the Espas. Your three-year-old child would also have been better off in the Espas. This was probably due to the MPV's Isofix child seat mounts, a more rigid system of fixing the seat which offers greater control over the deceleration forces in an impact. Our discovery didn't have those modern fixings. Another demonstration of how you can't assume a 4x4 is guaranteed to be a safer choice for your family. The result of the match is clear. In this crash between these two cars, you'd be better off in the MPV. Which is probably not what many 4x4 loving school run parents would have expected.